When Abdul Wahab, an 18th century Bedouin, visited far off areas like Iran and India, he was shocked. It was a cultural shock. He was amazed at the depths and breadth of those cultures, which he was not familiar with. And he also saw Muslims practicing their religion, but also practicing those cultures. His reaction was very austere. When people are exposed to knowledge and information, like culture, which they are not familiar with, there are two reactions. One reaction is to embrace, is to accept, is to follow, is to ask that I need to learn more from you. This is what happened when the Muslims actually interacted with the Greeks. The Greek philosophy was something they were not familiar with in the deserts of Arabia. So their reaction was of amazement. The second reaction, of course, is withdrawal. Is that if, I, if you show me something or tell me some knowledge which I was never exposed to, I will withdraw, I will retract, and I will reject what you have to offer, and I will go back into my cocoon. That was the second reaction. So we call this the Ahle Hadith, and which is the, the traditions, and Ahle Rai. Ahle Rai are the people of reason. So those who, who embraced like the knowledge that they got from the Greeks were the Ahle Rai, the people of reason. They accepted logic, they accepted the philosophy, they understood them, and they and the early uh, scientists and uh, thinkers of Islam were actually those who embraced these knowledges. But as time passed, of course, power, the control over areas, um, dictated, and the result was the Ahli Hadith, the people who retracted, prevailed, and they succumbed, or, or they, they overtook those people who were offering logic and knowledge and philosophy, and learning from others. So Abdul Baha was an example of one who retracts, and he was, uh, what he created was Salafism, Wahhabism, and this is a personality type. And what is the core of this personality is one is that they are very much against men and women mixing. They're, they're just they just have to separate everything. They're very very comfortable bunch of men together. Any woman walks in and they're 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 not in their comfort zone anymore. That is one difference that they have. The second difference that they have is that. They want to control every aspect of your life. They won't leave anything to your choice. Every human has a heart and a mind. And what the Salafi approach is that your heart and your mind has no value. We will tell you how you think and what you do, even how you feel. What you feel is to be controlled. Music makes you feel different, so we will control your music. Uh, poetry makes you feel different, changes your mood. We don't want that. That is what the Salafi attitude is. And finally, the Salafi attitude is of violence. That if you do not conform, we have the right. And they justify it. They use mechanisms and means, false of course, that we are in the right to punish you, to enforce on you things that we think you should not do and you would like to do. Things that your mind tells you to do. Things that your heart tells you to do. That is at the core of the Salafism. If we are trying to isolate the ills of Islam, the, what Muslims are doing, the things that, the behaviors that they do, which we normal people don't understand, even amongst Muslims, and majority of Muslims do not agree with, do not follow, um, we have to encapsulate it in the Salafi tradition. And the Salafi tradition, an average Muslim has to understand there are fault lines, there are seven fault lines which I've described in the book, which tells you where the Salafi actually deviates from the real Islam, where the Salafi concocts, where the Salafi deceives you and using words like farz or bidda, and they, they, they will tell you to do things and justify things which are actually not core of the religion, which are not part of the religion. And it's very difficult for a Muslim of today with all the propaganda which is coming out of billions of dollars of investment in this propaganda that an average Muslim doesn't have much of a chance to negate or to refute or to argue with these people. But just to point out that these seven sins are the key fault lines that if a, an average Muslim understands well, he will be or she will be able to hold their own and be able to explain and 
confront a Salafi with the issues that he is passing on as religion, which is nothing but a subculture, domination, misogyny, and power struggle. Who is this Mullah of today who fills me with guilt, who drains me of confidence, who robs me of pleasure, who sends me to death? I have a brain to think. I have a heart for compassion. I have the book to read. I have science to explore. There is no compulsion in religion. There is no woman or man unequal. There is no human without dignity. I am no longer guilty. I am confident and proud. My faith is honesty. My creed is justice. My goal is equality. I am a free Muslim of today. Are you?